Monorail is almost a year old now, and it has proven useful for a lot of people. That's why there's now a push to got, try to get the train moving on the weekends permanently. In fact, take a look at these numbers. On an average day in January, about 3,800 people rode on SunRail. But when the train ran on the weekend, like it did for the Winter Park Arts Festival earlier this month, more than 26,000 people rode the rails in that single weekend. And joining us this morning is David Porter. He is the founder of SunRailRiders.com to talk about it's been a big push to get SunRail on the weekends. Great to see you, David. Thank Thanks you for much. coming in. For First of all, talk to me about your passion for this. Why do you want to see this happen? It's, it's, it's just, to me, it's just obvious. Uh, traffic is getting very, very congested in Central Florida. The potential is there. And quite frankly, one of the things that really talked about a lot is transportation-oriented development, which means that you have transportation. I mean, that's how the West was won. Where they put the train tracks, where they put the stations is where the cities grew. And that's what the potential is here. But if it doesn't run seven days a week, it becomes a lot less useful. You know, a lot of people frame this whole seven-day-a-week thing as it would be great to go shopping in, in Winter Park or go to dinner and stuff like that. But, you know, this is a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week town. There are a lot of people, you know, who don't work a traditional Monday through Friday, nine-to-five schedule. SunRail is actually along uh, a corridor that has major employers, the airport, the two major hospitals, also some smaller hospitals. All those are seven-day-a-week operations if SunRail doesn't run uh, seven days a week. You know, it just seems like a no-brainer. This is something that really, we started a petition drive last July and thousands of people signed because it, to, to everybody it seems like a no-brainer. Why doesn't it run seven days a week? People would use I think more people, quite frankly, use it on a daily basis on, on Saturday and Sunday than you even see during the week. Right. There's a lot of people who can't get to the train because the train doesn't go near their job or near their home, but would use it for for that, you know, for that convenience, if it was available. And on a recent post on your website, you actually talked about those numbers, about how much it would cost. And do you estimate, or does it, where does that five and a half million dollar that's estimate from, that's come from? from? Florida Department of Transportation, okay. so they so were they asked estimate to estimate five and a half million dollars, right, to be able to get this train up and running on the weekends. Mm -hmm. How do you see uh, just everyday average Central Floridians being able to help out with that? Well, I mean, number one, I think people would ride. Understand, the fare box never pays. There's almost no public transportation system any place in the world where the fare box actually pays for it. There have to be some subsidy to it. But but what's the, what's the trade-off? What, what are the other things that happen in terms of jobs and business and things of those natures that grow because that train is actually available seven days a week? So, you know, we just did some simple math, and trust me, I'm not a mathematician. <laughs> but, you know, and people also said they'd be willing to pay, pay a slightly higher fare to ride on the weekends than they do during, during the week. And so just the, my kind of guesstimation and stuff like that, it looks like just out of fair box, you could raise two and a half million dollars, and then so there's another three million dollars. You know, three million. You know, I can't write a check for three million dollars. There are people, there are institutions, and governments in this community that have the ability to do that. I've lived in Central Florida for 30 years. I've seen some fantastic things happen. People thought it would be impossible. Central Florida has been blessed with great leadership. Mayors like Carl Langford and, and, and business leaders like Billy Dial, people who got things done that they thought were impossible. First time I ever came to Orlando, Orlando Airport was a Quonset hut at the side of 528 in 1972. Look at Orlando Airport right. now. So $3 million is not, you know, that's it's not, not a hard. Shot. It's, it's, it's not, that's not hard. You know, we're Americans, okay? Sure. You know, Normandy invasion, we did, that's hard. You know, crossing the Edmund Pettus Bridge and something like that, that's hard. Landing on the moon, that's hard. But getting this $3 million, come on. All right, so David, how can our viewers contact you if they would like so to get they involved? Can, yeah, they can, we have a Facebook page. Page. This uh, that's called Sunrail Riders Florida. We have a Twitter feed that's called Sunra at Sunrail Riders, and we have our website. It's uh, uh, www.sunrailriders.com. We write about it all the time. Please follow us, like us. I've been and, following uh, you. And put the, and put the <laughs> Thanks, David. On, okay? Thank you so much. It's okay. really it's really interesting. I think a lot of people certainly agree with you about getting this done. So we'll see what happens. Keep us posted, David. Okay, absolutely.